About five years ago, I was flying from Seattle to Rochester to, to see a friend of mine, and when I got on the airplane, I had an Economy Plus seat. It was an aisle seat. Of, I used to fly a lot because I would go to the conferences and that were in other countries, and I would often go to Rochester to see a friend. And so I, I had a lot of um, frequent flyer miles. I remember at one point I had enough miles to go to the moon, and uh, so I, I, I was bumped into a economy plus of a lot. And um, I uh, it, I just sat down when somebody asked if they could switch seats with me. You gotta understand, I used to live alone, and when somebody talks to me in an unexpected way, it's usually my first non-work-related human interaction for, for at least some amount of time. And so it's always exciting when that happens. And um, I looked at his seat, uh, and uh, you know, most people would ignore it, but I paid attention to it because, like I said, it was one of the few human interactions I got outside of the workplace. Um, and um, I looked at his seat, and it was the middle seat of economy. And uh, I, my first impression was, is this guy crazy? And then I realized, if I switch seats with him, maybe... Maybe I, I might get a little bit more than I bargained for. Maybe, maybe this guy, uh, he has a good reason for needing to switch seats. And that, uh, you know, I might get some kind of a reward. Maybe he's going to invite me over to his mansion when we arrive in New York City. Because I had, I had a layover in New York City. And so I switched seats with him. And uh, as we get off the plane, nothing happens. I was hoping to, maybe if I didn't get to go to his mansion, at least he would introduce me to my future wife. Or uh, anything, even even if we got in, got to New York and he he he, he bought me lunch or something. You know, I was expecting some kind of surprise at the end of it, but nothing, nothing. Well, we didn't even talk after the flight again, and so maybe realize that sometimes uh, when you have a big. Uh, something big that you want of uh, you could always ask the worst case that could happen is somebody could say no right oh uh, you know the, the other thing that maybe uh, that that made it work so well was he didn't give a reason for why he wanted to switch seats had he had he elaborated you know his family is nearby or because it was an aisle seat maybe he had bladder problems or colon problems had he elaborated a little bit too much I might have backed off, you know, I, I might have, well, I don't know, I might have thought of another solution, maybe somebody else he could switch seats with, maybe I would have looked for another aisle seat in the plane, you know, had he said he had bladder problems, yeah, but he, he, he made it so, he made it so simple that there was nothing to attack. If you realize that if you want to ask for something, you don't want to elaborate too much. It's kind of like faking a sick day. You don't want to tell your boss all the gory detail about why you're sick. You just keep it as, as simple as, I don't feel too well today. I'll, let's, I'll see you tomorrow, right? Well, it, it kind of has that feeling to it. it I, I've gone through this a few times in my life where myself or somebody I know has asked for uh, something in such a simple way that it, it's very hard to deny it. Um, when I was in college, I had a friend of mine who I'd known since high school, and I wanted him to email a picture of a girl that we both knew uh, when we were in high school. I hadn't seen her in a long time. And uh, my friend, uh, he asked me for two bucks for it, uh, just to send me an email. And um, we had a little bit of a disagreement about other things. I didn't want to give it to him, but he didn't send me the picture. And it made me realize he probably does this with not just me. He probably does this with a lot of his, his friends or even not so friends. Um, like little requests like that. Oh, two bucks, three bucks, you know, five bucks here. And when we were in college, that was a lot of money. Today, I would value a friendship a lot more than two bucks. I wouldn't ask for 2000 even I, if I could get away with it, right? I don't have that many friends that's why somebody wanting to talk to me on an airplane was such a such a big deal that time um sometimes people get what they want by not talking oh this is especially true when um they want to get out of trouble um i do a lot of deals on craigslist and one of the big headaches is people who cancel at the last minute you know i you know if i'm gonna do something I set aside the time for it, right? I, I, I'm not going to go there in my pajamas or or without my teeth being cleaned up or without a shower. You know, I actually have to rearrange 
uh, my day to, to accommodate uh, all the, the gigs that I do on Craigslist, to do it in a very human way, right? And when they don't show up, you know, it it, it puts a, it's, it makes a day a mess because I can't schedule something else that I might have wanted to do personally. So, for example, a couple years ago, I was in the rideshare section of Craigslist. I was driving to see a friend in California, and I found somebody who wanted to rideshare on the way back. He had agreed to pay me 80 bucks, uh, and uh, but he was a, a good 20, 30 miles out of the way. And uh, he said that his uh, grandmother was sick. Oh, and he needed to go see her uh, in, uh, where was that? He needed to, somewhere in Oregon, I can't remember, it wasn't Seattle, but it was somewhere in Oregon. So I drive out of my way an extra 30 miles to this um, suburb to go meet up with him at a Starbucks, if I remember correctly. And I wait 10, 20, 30 minutes and he doesn't show and he finally texts me saying that um, he uh, it was too late. His grandmother had passed away and he, he didn't want to go home anymore. And... Uh, you know, I was out of my way. He really should have paid me for the trip anyway, but he didn't offer to, and I didn't feel like I could ask him for it. He had just lost his grandmother. But at the same time, uh, I wasn't just upset for myself. I was upset that uh, this guy, he wasn't willing to um, go just because his grandmother had passed away. You know, it was okay to see his grandmother while, while she was alive, but it wasn't so important to go to her funeral anymore. He would rather be stuck at his job, whatever it was. He needed those the, that extra few bucks at his job, whatever the case was. It was it was kind of insulting to his grandmother as well. Um, I didn't say it to him, but he got his wish. He didn't have to pay anything. My guess is that he uh, he knew it would be tough for me to ask for money. I don't even know if the grandmother's story is true now, but he, he set it up in such a way that by not asking, he made it my responsibility to ask him for the payment, and I think that was very smart of him. I see this a lot. So um, not long ago, I was doing some uh, tutoring, and this guy canceled on me, and um, at the time, I didn't have a car. I had just lost my car in an accident, and I had to walk, and this was during the winter time. And um, we were supposed to meet at a library, and uh, it was a good 30 to 40 minute walk from my apartment. And it was a very cold day, 35 degrees, a lot of wind. I think with the wind chill, it might have been in the 20s. And I get there, and I wait for him for 10 minutes, and I call him. And um, he says, oh, didn't you see my email? And I'm not checking my email, because we used to talk on the phone a lot. This was one of the few times he emailed me, actually. I said, oh no, what happened? Are you okay? Because my first impression was, he gotta be sick. You know, oh, it, it, you know, had he had some event, he would have known about it. We had just met a day or two earlier, and, and uh, he, he, we, he said, see you Tuesday, or whatever the day was. And, oh, so, so obviously, it was unplanned, so I was worried for him for, for two seconds. And he said, no, 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 I'm, I'm having a good time at, my, uh, at some kind of family gathering. And um, for a second, I was happy for him because um, I don't get along with my family. Well, this guy, he's a few years younger than me, and um, he's telling me that having a good time with family, so I wish him well, and I hang up the phone, and it's only when I press the, the hang-up button on the phone do I realize, oh my god, I'm not getting paid today. I was charging him about, um, I was charging him 40 bucks an, an hour, and um, so, so I walked all the way there for nothing, and um, he was very smart. I'm guessing had I asked him, you know, to pay for the session, uh, because I don't really walk there, you know, or at least half of it, he probably would have. He was probably waiting for me to, to tell him what the penalty was, uh, but I didn't because he he, he, he he put a blank spot in there. He didn't say, oh, how much do I owe you, right? He, he just hung in there and said, oh, I'm having a good time with my family, right? It's kind of hard to, to, uh, to chime in when somebody's having a good time with their family or they just lost their grandmother. And uh, it was that. And then um, getting back to um, asking for something big, uh, I had another client of mine who um, wanted to change the time. Um, we had agreed to meet 4 to 6 p.m. on a, f I think it was a Friday. And um, he had texted me at 2 in the afternoon asking to change it to 5 to 7. And uh, there was a problem with that. 
We had a cloudy day here in Seattle, and at 6 p.m. I was thinking about checking the weather forecast of nearby cities because I wanted to go see the full moon. Uh, it was the night of the full moon um, right before Easter, and I wanted to see it. I, uh, I, I made a resolution earlier this year to, to take 10,000 pictures of outer space uh, with my camera, and um, I, uh, I'm up to 3,000 now, so a little, be, a little bit behind in terms of the proportion of the year that's gone by. Anyways, um, so um, that would have interrupted with the flow of the events, and I already planned this out. I even texted the, the kid... The night before, saying four to six tomorrow, right? And he said, okay, yeah. And, and all of a sudden, he wants to change it to five. And he didn't elaborate why. You know, had he elaborated why, I probably would have much more easily shot him down, right? Um, unless he said he was not feeling well and he wanted to wait. I probably would have just rescheduled the whole thing if that were the case, you know. If um, he had said he wanted to see his girlfriend at four, you know, it was a Friday after all. You know, I probably would have asked about her, and um, it might have embarrassed him enough to not want to do it, right? Had he said he wanted to, I don't know, he just got this video game, and he wants to play it for an extra hour, you know, I I probably would have shot that down as well, you know, um, hey, I'm going to teach you how to write a video game today, you know, right? He's, he's learning computer science, right? Had he said he wanted to, um, I don't know, what else? The the point is he didn't elaborate, which made it much easier for for him for it might made, made it much harder for me to shoot at him because I didn't have an anchor to, to point at, and uh, I got so I got so tense up for a few seconds. It took me about ten minutes to to compose myself to send him a text back saying you know I, I have a long drive after this so can we can we stick at four and he was okay with that. And I didn't elaborate either. Had I elaborated saying I wanted to see the full moon, he probably would have shot that down as well, right? You could see the full moon any month of the year, right? And um, so that was that. We we, we both um, didn't elaborate too much, and it turned out well. Um, we, we didn't feel we had to uh, compromise too much. I still don't know why he wanted to change. Um, it, it, it's kind of burning me now, but I know I'm not going to probe too much because he's still a good client of mine. He's going to bring more clients. Thanks for watching.